Throughout history, the way we classify species has changed. Today we have a scientific approach that analyzes anatomy and genetics. But this doesn't stop the general public from believing that certain animals exist, despite having little or no physical proof. Even scientists are sometimes guilty of describing a new species, only to find out later that they got it wrong. Species that enter the scientific literature with a Latin name, but are later discovered not to be valid, are called dubious taxon, and it turns out they aren't uncommon. In this video, we're looking at five species that we thought existed, but as it turns out, they never really did. At least not how we thought. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, help me out by liking the video, leaving a comment, and maybe even subscribing. I also want to say a special thanks to my patrons. It's thanks to them that I'm able to make a new video every week. If you want to join me on Patreon, check out the link in the video description below. Now, let's get into the video. In 1993, an American ornithologist was looking at skins of hummingbirds held in a museum collection. He came across a male hummingbird he had never seen before. It was bright purple with black flight feathers. And on the face and chin, it was bright green. Due to how different it was from any other known hummingbird, it was described as a new species and given the scientific name Heliangelus zeusii, and the common name Bogota Sun Angel. The bird was a mystery. The collection card stated that the skin had been purchased in Bogota, Colombia in 1909, but this information wasn't much help. It wasn't uncommon for bird skins that were sold in Colombia around this time to have been collected from all over the country, and even as far away as Ecuador and Venezuela. Nonetheless, the Bogota Sun Angel was believed to be a montane species preferring cloud forest habitats, and if it was still alive in the world, it likely had a very small population in a very remote area. But it turns out that hummingbirds are extremely hard to classify. With over 300 known species and new ones regularly being discovered, they're often confused for one another. And to make matters worse, hybridization between species is not uncommon. In 2001, the first use of DNA to help classify a new species was used, and as the years went on, older species were revisited to help gain clarity about their origin. This includes the Bogota Sun Angel. Genetic analysis revealed that the specimen in the museum collection was not a distinct species at all, but rather a hybrid between a female long-tailed sylph and a male from another yet-to-be-determined species. They also managed to match the genetic markers of the specimen to the long-tailed sylph populations in the Colombian mountains, helping solve some of the mystery of the hybrid specimen's origin as well. In 1948, outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a set of fossilized footprints was discovered that would cause a lot of confusion. There were 20 pairs of tracks that were about 80 centimeters apart from each other, with each track consisting of three linear indents. A scientist from the Pittsburgh Carnegie Museum took impressions of the tracks and put them on display for the public. This was when a reporter from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette wrote an article about the prints, clearly not knowing what they were, yet making a guess anyway. They were as though made by a giant chicken as it hopped across the surface. Scientists at the museum weren't sure what they were, but they were certain that they weren't chicken footprints. Not only did the fossils predate chickens, but they predated all of the dinosaurs to a time known as the Carboniferous period. It was an era when the land was dominated by amphibians and arthropods. So the theory about the owner of the footprints was revised. A couple of weeks later, in a publication called Times, 
It was reported that the footprints were actually a species of bipedal frog, and it caught on. In fact, for nearly 40 years, the giant Carboniferous frog was believed to have existed by the general public. It wasn't until 1983 that the tracks were re-examined. In their paper published in the Journal of Paleontology, Derek Briggs and Ian Rolf concluded that the tracks were almost certainly from a species of sea scorpion that either lived entirely in freshwater or had an amphibious lifestyle. At the time, they were the largest arthropod tracks known to exist, until a set of millipede tracks discovered in England surpassed them in 2018. In 1983, the same year that the mystery of the giant Carboniferous frog was being solved, a new species was being described in Australia. Hunter Island is a small island off the northwest end of Tasmania that's home to many species of nesting seabirds. Over the centuries, it had regularly been used by Aboriginal people as a hunting ground. At a stockyard site on the island, some ornithologists came across the subfossil remains of a penguin. They were found in what's known as a midden, which is a pile of waste, often left behind by humans over a long period of time. While penguins were known to live in the area and were hunted by the Aboriginal peoples, these bones didn't fully match any known species. The Hunter Island penguin was described, and it didn't just represent a new species, but they were supposedly members of a whole new genus of penguin. Through radiocarbon dating, the bones were determined to be somewhere between 690 and 830 years old. But the penguin's validity as its own species came into question as more information about the bone's discovery came to light. For starters, the Hunter Island penguin was the sole species in its own genus, but some scientists noted that some of the bones were indistinguishable from living species of crested penguin. Even more detrimental to the penguin's case as a species is that the bones were found in different layers of the midden, which would seem to imply that they were from different birds killed possibly decades apart. Finally, in 2017, genetic research advanced to the point where DNA could be extracted from subfossil remains, and all of the bones were genetically tested. Not only did this prove that it wasn't a new species, but it showed that the bones actually came from three different species of extant penguin. The Fiordland and Snares crested penguins of modern-day New Zealand, and the fairy penguin of southern Australia and Tasmania. The species is no longer considered valid and has been removed from scientific literature. The Birds of Paradise are a group of around 45 species of bird from eastern Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and northeastern Australia. They're famous because of the amazing displays of the males, which involve elaborate dances, calls, and feather manipulation. In 1894, ornithologist Anton Reichenau from the Berlin Natural History Museum described a new species of Bird of Paradise based off of a single male specimen. The specimen was collected from the Finestre mountain range of the Juan Peninsula in northeastern New Guinea. It looked similar to other known species, but it didn't share full characteristics with any other bird of paradise. It had green on the face and throat, yellow on the head and upper back, chestnut on the wings, rump, tail, and chest, and it had orange and white plumes that puffed out from its sides and lower back. Despite only having a single male specimen, Reichenau was sure it was a unique species, and he named it after his wife, Maria, giving it the epithet Paradisae Maria. Over time, more were found on the Juan Peninsula. By the 1920s, three separate specimens had been collected, but scientists were beginning to suspect that the bird may not be what it seemed. For one, it was extremely rare, far rarer than the other birds of paradise. Second, it shared very similar features with two other species. With the emperor bird of paradise, it shared the green feathers that extended from the throat to up around the eyes. 
with the Ragiana bird of paradise, it shared the orange display feathers on the sides. And thirdly, Maria's bird of paradise seemed to have a very small range. With all of the specimens having been collected from the Juan Peninsula, the species was only being found in the one and only place the other two species ranges happened to overlap. It was concluded that Maria's bird of paradise was likely a hybrid of the two, and it was declared a dubious taxon. And it wasn't alone. Dozens of formerly recognized species of bird of paradise have lost their species status and are now recognized as hybrids. Birds of paradise actually show extremely high rates of hybridization. About 1 in 20,000 birds is a hybrid, which is about three times more frequent than any other bird group. In total, only one hybrid female and seven hybrid males are known to exist in museum collections around the world, with the most recent one only being found in 2018. In 2001, the United States declared war with Afghanistan. Two years later, in 2003, they also declared war with Iraq. As American troops headed over to the Middle East, reports of frightening creatures started to circulate on the internet. In 2004, this picture surfaced online, and before long, it was everywhere. I personally remember seeing it when I was in high school and being shocked at the size of the animals pictured. They look like spiders, but when you look closer, it becomes clear that there's something different. The most obvious characteristic is their size. They seem to be huge, with the two animals being the same length as the person's leg behind them. The next strange characteristic is their jaws. While spiders have a pair of fangs that aren't always visible, these animals have what appear to be large protruding fangs that seem to almost form a jaw. Then the stories began to circulate. They were called camel spiders, and they were said to be feared by all the US troops. Not only did they like to prey on camels, eating their stomachs and laying eggs under their skin, they also attacked and killed sleeping soldiers. And they were said to be difficult to outrun, as they could supposedly reach speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour. Of course, none of these stories were true. While the animals pictured are arachnids, and one of their common names is camel spiders, they aren't spiders at all. They're salpugids, and they form their own order of arachnid, with around 1,000 known species. In reality, camel spiders are not very large, reaching a maximum size of about 15 centimeters. The camel spiders in the picture appear huge because of forced perspective. They're extremely close to the camera, so it's hard to decipher that in reality they would each fit in the palm of a person's hand. They also do not eat camels or people, though they are capable of eating insects and small reptiles, amphibians, birds, and rodents. They don't produce venom, but actually rely on their powerful jaws called chelicerae to break through exoskeletons, feathers, fur, and even bone. They also produce a digestive juice that softens their prey and allows them to more easily consume it. And of course, they also aren't capable of running 40 kilometers an hour. The fastest they've been clocked running is 16 kilometers per hour, but only over a very short distance. Myths about supposed giant camel spiders in the Middle East and North Africa persist. But the truth is, people have no reason to fear salpigids, and they play an important role in desert ecosystems. And that's it for today's video. Do you know of any other animals that were believed to exist, but now we know better? Tell me about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.